Uh, this is a response to Blakewood, uh, erstwhile enemy, then possible friend, who posted a clip of a video where I said my price for caring for my elderly parents was an acre of land and a hundred euros a week, uh, out of context. But later he, 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 he alerted me that I doxed myself online. And um, I have a few erstwhile online quote-unquote trolls or enemies that have since become maybe allies, I don't know, or at least empathetic. But I just, I just have been listening to archives. I, I can't, I often can't listen to recordings of my family because they were too triggering. But um, at the moment, I, I feel able to. And I listened to the whole video that that clip was taken from. And I just wanted to say that uh, at the age of, well, up until the age of eight, my siblings and I were trafficked. But consciously, from the age of eight, I worked. At eight, when we came, my father served 25 years in the British Royal Air Force. Um, and at the age of eight, we came back from Gibraltar. And um, Dad was always chasing the extra penny. And so not only did my mum have to work, but us children did as well. <laughs> so at eight, nine and ten, that was myself and my two older sisters, we'd be dropped off at a housing estate with a thousand easy fit leaflets being told to deliver one through each door. And um, we, we did it very often obediently. But I remember one time we just were so exhausted and so just confused as why we dumped about 300 of them <laughs> over a wall and just hoped we wouldn't get caught. And the next job was maybe age 11, 12, helping our parents clean offices. Um, on a cleaning contract for Acme or something like that it was called in Bradford on Avon and again the little rebel in me like why was I going to school and then being taken until 11.30 at night to help clean offices um, so I poured a whole <laughs> a whole um, squeezy thing full of glue into a very expensive typewriter in a factory in Bradford on Avon in Wiltshire. And, and Acme lost the cleaning contract because of that. But it was one of the best lies I ever told was when I denied all knowledge <laughs> of how the glue got in a 500 pound typewriter during the cleaning shift. But the point is at 11 or 12, well, I already had a job at 11 uh, like the first paid job I got outside of working from the age of eight for my father. Uh, the first paid job I got was in a pub in Melksham in Wiltshire for two and threepence an hour, that's about 12 and a half P. And I used to clean a pub on a Saturday morning and a Sunday morning and clean 10 B&B &B rooms which were mostly occupied by tradesmen, you know, like bricklayers and blockies and labourers, and I don't know what, but like rotten, filthy, stinking, <laughs> stinking rooms with smelly socks and porn magazines under the beds. And, um, you know, I cleaned the... This was at 11, I cleaned the pub, I... Hands and knees, that was scrubbing the floors... You know, the old-fashioned way, mopping and scrubbing and... And then um, 
And then, so then there was the office job cleaning and then then there was working in the restaurant, which is now the Dandelion in, in Bradford-on-Avon, opposite the Swan Hotel, worth millions now. But my father bought an unlisted building for about £6,000 back in, um, oh, I don't know, 1970. I was 12, so 57, 69, 70. Uh, you know, and, and it's now the dandelion, but I worked at least 25 hours a week in there from the age of 12, as well as uh, raising my younger sisters while my mum was away getting electroshocked in Roundway Hospital in Devizes. Um, and many times from the age of 12 to 18 in Bradford on Avon, I would say, Oh, my friends have all got a job in the mushroom quarry. They're earning loads. Can I get a job there? Or I also did babysitting. I had a babysitting agency with at least five friends working for me. You know, and that was engineered. I was being placed with people like, you know, babysitting for the right honourable John Jolliffe and his wife, you know, the niece of Lady Astor. Nancy Astor, is it? Anyway, that's so. I, so I was always manically busy, um, and when I would say to my dad, "I, I want to um, get a job in the mushroom factory like my friends because they're earning blah blah," he would say, oh, "No, no, no, it's family business. No, no, no. We all have to pull together. It'll all be years when I'm gone." And uh, the fruit of slave labour from the age of eight was a 65-acre farm in, in Ireland and uh, horses and uh, properties. and uh, So when Blake would post a clip saying Angie wants an acre and, and 100 euros a week to mind her parents, it's relative, Blakewood. Um, it was slave labour from the age of eight. And uh, I, I asked for an acre out of 65 and a hundred euros a week out of millions. I was just asking for the crumbs off the table. I understand Sharon Gale's been having a go at me again today. I won't be going to check. I understand Brian Harvey's been burning me. I won't go and check. I'm, I'm learning, finally, to preserve whatever energy I have left and not, um, not waste it. Um, yeah, that's the word for the day. Don't cast your pearl before swine. And I just mean that even in terms of people I've loved, like, um, I will do a blog on, on the <sighs> toxic family audios that, that, you know, could make me look bad, but I'm dealing with family right now. And, um, I don't know. You know, you can't hold anything in your hands except um, love. And I, <laughs> when I listen to my archives, the audio is even worse than my recent audio since I changed my camera. So I've got a wonderful new microphone um, and I'm just waiting on a cable. And, I'm just, and I remember my, my daughter talking to a detective at church in Navan and saying, you know, mum's blowing the whistle on some fairly serious shit in the area. Is she safe? <laughs> and my, my videos were so terrible at the time. The audio was barely audible and, and the video showed like, you know, a very distraught, unwell struggling to stay alive survivor and he said oh no it's okay they're going to ignore her because nobody will believe her they just think she's crazy <laughs> oh god so and and two people that have asked me in the last few months to interview them um and then have googled my name and with everything that hoaxed research has done They've come back and said, thanks, but no thanks. And it just makes me sad that the character assassination 
mission given to Karen Irving and her husband succeeded. But here's the thing, I never did it for fame, you know. I did it to have a voice. And and I must make a video and I will show evidence. I get inundated with all these companies offering to sponsor because I got monetized recently. And um I've got all these companies saying we we want to sponsor you, we'll give two hundred and fifty dollars minimum, blah blah blah. And I'm like, I ignore them all because I'm like why? Like I've only got one point six something, six four thousand subscribers and like I'm shadow banned to fuck <laughs> why would you want to sponsor me so I really need a YouTube expert to advise me like you know you know I, like literally money don't hold it tight we're only supposed to let it come into one hand and go out of the other you know alright god bless people isn't this so beautiful I just love the wildness of it. Say goodbye, Ruby. Ruby, you keep doing that pose with your arse. Come and say hello. <whistles> Good girl. <laughs> okay, people. The, the Poet's Corner. Look, I, I love the wildness. All right, God bless.